Before radiation therapy was invented, there were very few ways in which a person could be cured of cancer. When a person was diagnosed with cancer, it was a basic death sentence because there was so little that doctors could do. Those of the methods that were available for a patient were expensive and many times ineffective. They caused more pain than benefit. Out of these methods, the most common were surgery and chemotherapy. The prices of these vary from the type of cancer or tumor. Chemotherapy ranged from $200 and up and depended on the size of the patient. The cost of surgery depends on which type of tumor. It goes from breast cancer that costs about $21,000 to prostate cancer that costs about $41,000. As you can see, the cost for these treatments were far from cheap. And even if there was hope in them for curing, no one would be able to afford it. Even at these high prices, it continues to raise 15% each year. One of the methods used before the innovation of radiation therapy was chemotherapy. This is a shot distributed into your body to try and kill both the cancerous cells as well as the tumors that are not cancerous. This shot is spread all through the cardiovascular system. Since there are no ways of making the drug go to a specific part of the body, the drug killed many of the healthy cells as well. Surgery, another method, was sometimes effective, but it was a lot more expensive than the other treatments. This also caused excruciating pain and was very risky because one small mistake would cost the patient their life. After the surgery was finished, it would leave the person with scars that left both emotional and physical pain. The creation of radiation therapy started out with the simple discovery of X-rays. When Wilhelm Bronten discovered it, the process did not stop there. Henry Becquerel then discovered radioactivity or radiation. Both of these discoveries helped to begin the series of events that would lead up to the discovery of radiation therapy. Two people who greatly contributed to the discovery of radiation therapy were Marie and Pierre Curie. They had discovered polonium and radium, yet before further research could be done, Pierre Curie had died, so Marie Curie continued the work. She then discovered that radium had the ability to basically destroy the cancer cells of regular tumors, so that scientists later on would use it in a procedure that would help cure cancer and rid people of tumors. Although all of these scientists contributed to the method and procedure of radiation therapy, they didn't, however, invent a way to put this element into a working model. This job was left in the hands of two Stanford graduates with their PhD and MD, Henry Kaplan and Edward Binston. They began building the radiation therapy linear accelerator in 1952 and finished a working model of it in 1956 and later installed it in the San Francisco hospital. They created the first linear accelerator with the help of a radiation expert, Mitchell Weisbluth. It was first tested on a two-year-old male patient that had lost an eye due to retinal blastoma. This is a cancer that starts in the retina and if not treated would spread to the other eye and cause the patient to lose both eyes. With the help of the linear accelerator, they were able to save his other eye, saving the two-year-old boy's life. After Kaplan and Ginston finished building the first linear accelerator, people began to discover its many different problems. On occasion, the radiation therapy accelerator would strike a different area and miss its target, leaving the patient with extreme wounds and burns. If not handled carefully, the radiation therapy linear accelerator can cause severe burns, blindness, deafness, ulcers in the mouth and throat, and struggled breathing. One specific case of radiation therapy malfunctions is of a man named Scott Jerome Park at age 43 that suffered these exact symptoms. An attendant failed to see that the computer directing the linear accelerator to treat his tongue cancer was directed to his brain stem. 
It continuously streamed radiation therapy for three straight days, leaving him in critical condition. He died weeks after the incident in 2007. After the first linear accelerator was installed in the San Francisco hospital, people constantly remodeled and transformed Captain Atkinson's original radiation therapy linear accelerator. You see, before Captain Atkinson developed the linear accelerator, two brothers named Russell Varian and Sigurd Varian developed the Crosstown tool. These two contributed greatly to the linear accelerator. Its job was to basically allow high frequency microwaves of radiation to stream from the linear accelerator to the patient. This was an extremely important part because without it, there would be no beam to pass through into the patient and the external radiation would not take place. Because of their clash down tube, most of the linear accelerators or machines were named after them and the name Varian turned into a worldwide known medical brand. There are many different types of linear accelerators and they are all used for different reasons. Different cancers can react differently to the different machines. Although there is a large variety of machines, radiation therapy does not always necessarily need to be transmitted by machines, but it can also be delivered through pills or seeds. This is not to be confused with chemotherapy that is transmitted through shots or pills as well. Some of the many machines used to give off radiation are the Varian 21EX and the Varian 23EX. All the way from the 1950s to the present day, it has been developed and improved. Today, we have improved the targeting system and have decreased the chance of there being a malfunction. Always trying to strive to get it to be 100% safe and effective. One of the many forms of radiation therapy is internal radiation. A part of internal radiation is brachy therapy. This is the form of radiation through seeds or pills given to expose and focus in small parts of the body with radiation. Then after the seeds have been placed, a beam locates them and administers the radiation. They also use small machines to monitor the brachy therapy to keep it at the right dosage. Another form or method used in radiation therapy is external radiation. This is when radiation is transferred to a beam given off by a linear accelerator that locates the exact position of the tumor or cancerous cells. This method is used commonly in many hospitals because it allows for a more effective way for administering the radiation. Radiation therapy has changed enormously throughout the ages and continues to evolve. When we look at Kaplan and Ginson's first linear accelerator, we can't even imagine how far we have come in design and efficiency. After the creation and development of radiation therapy, the rate of cancer deaths has decreased at alarming rates. Although radiation therapy is not 100% effective, it has made just about the biggest impact that anything could have. It has saved more than 40,000 lives in the last 54 years and continues to do so. In everyday life, to a regular person, radiation therapy might not seem so important. But imagine if someone spontaneously became ill with cancer or a tumor the size of a fist was developing inside them. Then what? Then we turn to radiation therapy, the life-changing, fascinating, and innovative invention given to us 54 years ago to make a difference. And it has.